Okay, so welcome, welcome everyone to another wonderful episode of Supercharged Sunday with me, Emily McHugh, your supercharged business coach and host, and my fantastic supercharged guest today, Brianna Nielsen. Welcome, Brianna. <laughs> thank you, Emily. <laughs> It is thank so, you, thank you. Yes, it is wonderful to have you. Brianna is an amazing person and she has wonderful insights to share with us today. And I think you're just going to be totally supercharged by the time you finish hearing all that she's sharing. So our topic today is the benefits of yoga at work and beyond. And Brianna is a yogi and a human resources director, and she's going to share from her perspective. So Brianna, again, welcome and Please share some of your background. How do these two things come together, being a yogi and an HR director? Okay, well, thank you so much, Emily. Thank you, everybody listening. Um, I'm very, very honored to be part of your Supercharged Sunday. So thank you for having me today. So a little bit of my background is I am a mother of two. I have a daughter, a son. My husband's a firefighter. We keep very busy. <laughs> My full-time job is that I am a director of human resources for the company Rematronics. So our company installs and deinstalls high-tech medical equipment around the world. So any type of large electronics, we install MRIs, PET scanners, X-ray scanners, radiation therapy, proton therapy. Um, we complete the full turnkey logistics of going to the airports, picking up the systems, bringing it to the hospitals and performing the rigging and installation. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that is what our company does. We have 140 employees. We have the most incredible team, I think, on this planet for what they do every day and every week. It is really so well orchestrated that I think everybody on our team should be exceptionally proud of the work that they're performing. Um, and again, this, this equipment is helping to diagnose, treat any type of cancers, any type of medical issues. So for the humanitarian piece of what our company does, it is very near and dear to our hearts. We are very passionate. I think everybody on our team is very passionate about our work. So, so again, big shout out to my team, our Rematronics family. You are just incredible for what you do out there. So I have been with our business for 13 years, wow. um, doing HR for the last 9, 10. I absolutely love it. I am an extremely extroverted person, so I'm very people-driven. So working with people comes very easily. It comes very naturally. I connect easily with people. So when I went through the company, I went through a little bit of logistics and accounting, and I kind of touched on a few pieces before I found my home in HR. And I just love HR. Again, I love working people. So it's been a very, very great fit. So, so again, I've been with um, Rematronics for 13 years. And throughout the years, I have had other hobbies. I have I do running, CrossFit. At times, we were doing boxing a few times a week. And then my best friend wanted to try yoga. And again, at the time, we were doing all of these high-intensity classes and other extracurricular activities and I was like well I don't know if yoga is really my speed but let's try it so we go to a gym we tried yoga it was fun I wasn't sure if I was ever going to go back and we went back and then I just I got addicted to it I loved everything about it I love the poses but I really started to go for stress management so whether it was daily or work, I just wanted to find a nice release. I really loved learning about the breathing techniques. And then we found a yoga studio that we be began to practice at. Absolutely loved it. And then they began to offer teacher training. So when I heard this, it just really kind of touched on a big part of my life that because yoga was so big and what I was doing daily, I wanted to share that with others. So I went through the teacher training. After the teacher training, that studio asked me if I could begin teaching for them, which of course I was so excited to. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's that's been our story ever since. So so through the years, that studio ended up closing. I went to another studio for a few years. They ended up closing, unfortunately, due to COVID. 
And, and at that time, the owner of our CrossFit facility, it's called CrossFit Fort Pierce, he would come to that studio to come to my classes. So when he heard that that studio was closing, he said, just come teach it, come teach at CrossFit. We would love to have you, which was amazing. So currently I am teaching at CrossFit Fort Pierce on Sundays at 2 p.m. That is open to the public. That is not specific to just anybody that is a member of CrossFit. So that is where I have been for the last year. So, so again, Rematronics 13 years, teaching yoga for around six, seven years now, um, and just keeping busy. Again, with yoga, it has become so much of my daily life, part of our work life, part of our family life. Our babies love to do yoga with us. Our friends love to come to our classes. My parents are always at class. So it's really kind of taken off and to how many people it has impacted. So that's Brianna, fun. do you still, that's really quite fantastic. Do you still run the marathons? I know you're quite the marathoner. Do you still do that? Well, we, um, we try to stick to the half marathons. We did one marathon years ago and it was a different beast and it was great. We got our, our sticker and, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yes, we are working on going towards another half marathon. It's just another fun release for my friends to go out and talk for the two or three hours that we go running for. Um, so yes, we are planning another one for around January. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, so, it's just another way that it's very meditative for us. We go out, we, we laugh, we have fun. It's, it's just a good time. So, you know, I hear the theme of stress management. When you said you got into yoga, it was based on stress management. And even with the running, it's a time to meditate, to bond with your friends and all of this. So it's all about this um, emotional and well-being. And I know you're very much into that. Can you share with us with the whole effects of COVID at your workplace? How, do, how have you managed to deal with that? And as, as we get into specifically the benefits of yoga, but just addressing what are the issues why yoga is so beneficial what are the issues you found that need to be addressed right well emily as you know the entire world has been impacted by the pandemic i think a lot of people have really you know been suffering from emotional mental health this year mm -hmm. um, we are seeing you know the rapid declines especially in some of the reports they're pulling now so my team and i my hr team we have really been trying to promote emotional and mental wellness this past year and a half. Um, we're sending alerts out. We're telling our team about EAP programs that we offer. We even have a few sessions through Cigna that we've been telling our employees about. So just trying to engage them in any type of healthy release, healthy ways to deal with emotional health, emotional stress, whether that is running, yoga, boxing, um, anything that can just kind of get those endorphins going, you know, maybe come around to other people, whether it's virtually, whether it's in person in a safe manner, any time that we could just kind of get together, get that breath going and just kind of get that mindset back on track because it's, it's been a tough year for everyone. I think this has impacted everyone's mental health in some way or another. And, and these are just our healthy ways of coping. So yeah. we'd like to share that with others. So you mentioned before, but is it EAP? I want to make sure I understood that. Oh, um, yes. So that is our employee assistance program. Okay. So okay. a lot of companies, a lot of employers offer this. You could also Google it. There's a lot of help online. Um, but just something that we offer, we do offer free counseling for our employees and their immediate family. Okay. So they could call this number. It's 24-7 and just, you know, talk to a certified counselor. Okay. Someone that's always there. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. So now tell us about these benefits of yoga. With all that being said, now how do we benefit from yoga <laughs> and put it to work for ourselves? Well, Emily, there are so many benefits of yoga. Um, I mean, my top would have to be, you know, with yoga, it has taught me a lot about approach. So just kind of go down a few tips. But for my approach, every day I wake up, and, you know, I have that choice. I want to choose to be happy. I want to choose to have a positive day. Mm -hmm. There might be a list of a hundred things that I never get to, and that's okay. Um, just 
you know, working on the approach. How are we going to tackle these problems? How are we going to tackle it in a way that's positive and impactful? Mm -hmm. So that's been a huge way that yoga has helped me. Um, a big, another big piece would be perspective. So I try to live my life through perspective every single day, you know, whether an issue comes up at work, whether it comes up in family life, you just kind of have to take that step back and say, okay, this is happening. You know, let's address that this is going on. Um, you know, but it could be worse or it could, something else could be happening. So, so we just kind of have to keep everything in perspective, keep it in line that we're going to get through it one way or another. Big piece again, that yoga has really brought me through. Um, one of the most powerful pieces has been the breath. So breathing, whether it is, you know, daily, whether it's at night to kind of de-stress, our breath controls so much of how we maneuver our days. When we think we're spiraling out of control, we can just close our eyes, come back to that breath, come back to that happy place. I always tell my yogis as they're lying on their mats with their eyes closed in a nice serene space that you can come back to this mindset at any point of your day. You don't need a yoga mat. You don't need candles. You just need your breath. And that has been one of the most powerful tactics I have learned through yoga. And there's a lot of different breathing techniques that you can learn through yoga, but that is just it's huge. I mean, that even, again, going into my family life, when we had our son, I, we were so far along in the process that at that point, they're like, you, you can't get anything. I mean, you're going to have this baby. And it was just breathing through. <laughs> that baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I think people need to understand and value how much um, is wrapped around our breath and how much it can help us. So. Yeah, definitely. And, and we're going to come back to a, a breathing technique, Brianna. So as we go through your list, we're going to come back and talk more about it. So mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Right. And um, a few other tips, I would just say, you know, being proactive as opposed to reactive, again, through anything in life, whether it's work related, whether it's family life, whether it's anything going on, there's a lot going on in our world. So, so we try to be as proactive as we can. And again, that starts with our thoughts. It starts with our thoughts. It starts with how we cope to things when they do arise. So that way, not everything is the sky is falling. It's okay. You know, we have this issue. Let's acknowledge that we have an issue, address it and work on a resolution. Um, and then I'd say the last big piece for me would just be, you know, coming back to the choice which we touched on a little bit earlier, but you know, every morning you do have a choice. You have a choice of how you're gonna start your day, how you're going to live throughout that day and your choice and how you're choosing that is going to rub off on others. So if people see that you are just this positive person that you're gonna find an answer, it's gonna motivate them as well. They're gonna say, okay, you know, I'm gonna take charge of the situation. I'm gonna find a resolution. I'm gonna live this day positively. And, and again, that is all choice, it's all mindset. So Brianna, it's really intriguing to, to break it down this way because I think for me, I, I wouldn't look at um, yoga quite the way you've just explained it. I know there's breathing and I know there's things like that, but you're really putting it on a plane that's much higher than just even the activity of the yoga mm -hmm. itself. Because it's, it seems like all of this is all in your head mind your decisions so how would it how would it play through approach perspective breathing react um choice in terms of the activity of yoga now how does that manifest in the yoga practice or or is our our, lim our understanding of yoga limited maybe you should define it and then come back and answer that I no it's it's, it's a great question. great great point emily and I think a lot of people, they go to yoga, maybe they want to go to their first yoga class because they want to become more flexible or because they see these beautiful poses, whether it's on Instagram or people doing these poses on social media and, and the poses are 
they're very, they're great. They have a lot of benefits. Yes, they do make you stronger physically. Yes, every pose has a different benefit for your body, which is physically very impactful. But again, there's so much more to yoga that maybe, you know, people only see the surface value. Yes. And, and for me, it wasn't even the poses that really drew me in. It was more of the benefits of the breath or the stress relief or these people just look so calm and peaceful coming out of the studio. I want that. And <laughs> so kind of that aha so moment. Tall, for sure. <laughs> but like you said, Emily, it's all, it's all encompassing. You know, you have the history of yoga, you have the language, the background, the physical piece of it, the anatomy, you have the breath. I mean, there are just so many branches of yoga and how they, they touch your life. And that's why, um, it is, it's such a big part of what we do every day. Wow. Wow. So there's a lot, a lot of dimensions. And I think that's what you're, you're really expanding on that, the multi dimensions of it. But the most mm -hmm. important thing at the end is that there, there's so many different residual benefits. But for me, I know when I used to take yoga class, um, and I have not been faithful to to my <laughs> yogi work because I, you know, I'm doing my bhangra now. However, they all are related. They're all related, and the breath is one thing they all have in common. Absolutely, but I just remember that it's not as easy as it seems. It mm -hmm. certainly is work to do yoga correctly, but at the same time, because of the the mindset you can do it at the pace you can you can manage yes. as opposed to feeling that i have to do this stand on my head or something right emily and as you know because you have come to a few of my classes yes. which i love having you there yes. um but i do teach all levels i tell people you know leave ego at the door do not worry about what your neighbor is doing that is not why we step on our mats every day that's not why we practice yoga we don't know people's backgrounds. They could have a gymnastics background or dance background. So things could come very easily for them. And right. it's silly to try to compare, you know, the beautiful, unique things that our bodies can do to anyone else. Um, so yes, my classes are gauged to all levels. They're very upbeat. They're fun, probably more informal than a typical, nor a typical yoga class. We have loud, fun music blasting the whole time and but that's me and I teach from my heart and that's going to come through I mean I can't try to act like a very very subtle person because I'm not <laughs> I have a lot of energy and and my yogis love that so <laughs> yes I mean but that's the whole point of it is that you bring each teacher brings their personal perspective and you're a wonderful teacher and you bring your energy and your personality and someone else does their version and that's you know, that's the whole point of it, as long as it kind of aligns with what each individual is hoping to achieve. But I would like for you to share with us a breathing technique that we can use as you're talking to entrepreneurs, small business owners who get caught up in their everyday activity. How do they weave breathing into their day and how, what would be a great technique for them to start doing? A really great technique would be working on our ujjayi breath. So our ujjayi breath is an audible breath. And anybody listening that wants to try it with us, you close your eyes, you take a nice deep inhale, fill the belly, fill your lungs. When you open your mouth, you exhale, but act as if you are fogging a mirror. Oh. So that you release that exhale, listening for that breath, and as you take a nice deep inhale, maybe take that breath to a count, like the count of four. So you find that nice, steady, rhythmic breath. Open the mouth, exhale, find that audible breath as if you're fogging a mirror. Try to take it to the same count. <laughs> I have a mirror here I can fog. Perfect. My Mary Kay mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Just do a few rounds of that, but that's an ujjayi breath. You're looking for that audible breath and it's, um, it just helps to slow your body down, calm your nerves, taking it to account will begin to find that nice rhythmic breath. 
So just taking a few inhales and exhales at your own pace. You could do that at your desk. You could do that while you're driving. At any point, we always have our breath. Yes. So tell me the word you use. Is it ujjayi? I want to write. You have the spelling. Ujjayi? Mm -hmm. Is that U-J-I or what? So ujjayi is going to be Not the U. <laughs> <laughs> tell me whenever you're ready. <laughs> no, I'm ready. I'm ready. It's going to be U-J-J-A-Y-I <laughs> breath. Okay, very good. We'll have that in the blog. They can go check it out. The Ujjayi <laughs> breath. Okay, wonderful. So in, in the nice deep inhaling and then exhaling through your mouth audibly where you hear yourself like breathing a ha and you fog up your mirror. Yes. So you do it more <laughs> elegantly than, than I just explained. That was just a summary. <laughs> But no, yeah. But you know what, Brianna, I will just uh, to linger a little further on the whole breathing subject is that you're like, okay, breathing is in and out, in and out. Why are there so many different types of breath? Isn't it just in, out, in, out? And Emily, there's, um, of course, our breath is going to maneuver the way we, we train it to. So, so the different techniques, you can, you know, take the breath to a peak. You could release, you could extend the breath, you can have short little breaths. Um, you could use, you know, working with nostril type of breathing, opening up different channel channels. So yes, there's, along with the techniques, just so many different ways that we can use the breath. And again, just what you're looking for and the benefit. Um, you could even take that breath as you're doing things like working out and correlating it with, okay, you know, we're going to lift these heavy weights now. We'll breathe at the top and release. So. And, and, you know, I would always say that I, the question, and thank you for highlighting that. I think that's really important. It's everything has a technique and we shouldn't take our breath for granted. Maybe that's another thing that you're mm -hmm. highlighting as well, that it's a very, um, we may do it as an automatic way of life because that's what mm -hmm. keeps us alive, Great. <laughs> but we can maneuver it in a way for our benefit as well. So mm -hmm. understanding that, that power to do it that way. And um, what I wanted to highlight with your, the whole thing with the breathing is that it's all about oxygen flowing through your body and your brain and the more oxygen in your head, the clearer you can think and 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 cope with life in general, right? Right. right. So that's why this is not just some you know thing. It's it's really real. It's it's right. It has there is very, science behind it. <laughs> very, and I, for for thousands of years at this point, yes, for many 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 millen going on a long time. Okay, so now that we have that in place, I would like us to just re recap a little bit as we kind of summarize with the whole idea of approach and perspective and so on. So when you, if someone were to apply it now in a yoga setting, the things that you shared, how does that work? Um, so I would say collectively, you know, everything that we've talked about, the different branches of yoga, the breath, the coping mechanisms, you know, taking that daily choice, your approach, all of it is just going to come together, Emily. And, and again, it's a practice. You know, we always say when you step on your mat, it's like stepping in the ocean, you're always going to step in a different ocean. Hmm. So every day on your mat is different. And that's, that's what our practice is. It's a practice. It's not like when you are training for a race and you hit the finish line there's no end to yoga. It's just our daily practice and everything that we're going to practice, whether it's on the mat, whether it's in the car, whether it's at work, um, you're going to begin to live that and others are going to see it through you. Hmm. So how would you say it has impacted your work and the workspace? How does, how does yoga, when you put on your corporate hat and you're in your corporate mm -hmm. setting, how does your yoga practice now manifest in that setting i'd say the biggest piece for me would be again the approach mm -hmm. so so again we have 140 employees if there's an issue out there you know we don't look at it as an issue we say okay you know 
they have this going on. How can I help them? And it's not perceived as a negative thing. We're just going to take what they need and help them and give them every single resource needed to find a positive solution. So I'd say that would be the biggest piece for me would be the approach. And that ties in when you when you talk later about reactive and being proactive mm -hmm. versus reactive, it's really the slowing down and the, the whole idea of the breathing, it, it forces you to slow down. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and I and I see that that's how that's coming through and hearing you talk about that. It's I'm literally like visualizing it right. because right. It's, it's like a level of awareness where we just accustomed to just do and react as opposed mm -hmm. to say, okay, my breath, I shouldn't, it's not, it's something I need to respect. Mm -hmm. When I slow down my breathing, I slow down my thinking. When I slow down my thinking, I can make better decisions. Yes. And that is very needed. <laughs> 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 to say the least, to say the least, um, and, and I really, really appreciate, Brianna, the, how you're highlighting these points, because again, we overlook them. We think, oh, that's not for me. I've had some friends will say, oh, yoga is not for me. What do you mean? So right. breathing is not for you? Thinking clearly is not for you? You know, <laughs> really, I mean, obviously you may not want to sit there and do the class that way, but as far as the philosophy of mm -hmm. why it's important, even if you choose to do it a different way, it's still those results. And you're right, Emily. And like you said, I think there's a lot of perceptions about yoga. I mean, I've heard a lot of funny things through the years where we've even heard um, a few people say, oh, we thought you were just sitting in a circle chanting for an hour. And But there's there's the, perspe the mm -hmm. perceptions of it. And until someone realizes, no, 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 it's so much more than <laughs> whether it's the poses or yeah. thinking we're sitting in circles, chanting. There's just a lot of different components yeah. to yoga. Wow. So what would you recommend to somebody who has maybe never tried yoga before? And they're like, okay, where do I start? What do I do? How do I put this into my life? What do you recommend to them? What I would suggest is there are a lot of resources online right now. Um, if, especially with everything going on, if you're not comfortable going to a physical studio, then, you know, maybe check out some of the online resources. There's a lot of yoga classes online. Try to find an all levels class and really taper it to what you're looking for, for the benefits of yoga. If, you want to dive more into the breathing aspect. There's a lot of breathing techniques online. Um, if you want to be in the surrounding, you know, maybe find a studio close to you. A lot of studios, you know, they are following proper CDC guidelines. Um, so maybe find a place that's nice and safe for your practice if you want to be around others right now. And, and really just dive into what you're looking for for hmm. the benefits. And the good news, as you're saying, there's so many places that people can learn and, and make good choices. And certainly if they're in Fortress, Florida, they can right. take Brianna's <laughs> class. That's an easy choice right there. So <laughs> that's very exciting. And I know that you're, you know, you're working to do more with that. And it's, it's really great to have that activity here. And she might even take you to this beach. Which is Fort Pierce, Florida, I might say, Hutchinson Island. This was, um, what is this, Roundtree Island? What is that park called? I can't remember. I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. up, up in Vero. So, no, Vero or Fort, we'll just claim Fort Pierce for this. We'll see Fort Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell Vero anything. But, um, but yeah, so there's so so many um, benefits. And what what other advice would you share with, like, HR directors who are trying to manage mental health issues in their with their workforce. What are some things that they could do to make things better, supercharge their workforce? <laughs> well, I would suggest um, if they want to look into, you know, maybe offering yoga for their their teams. Again, there's plenty of resources online, but I'd say for any HR director for any company right now, mental and emotional health it's key. I mean, a lot of people 
there's just a lot going on. And those are two very big pieces that I think every employer should be looking out for their employees and their families right now. So I'd say for any person in HR, really try to just, you know, have the empathy for our employees, touch on those subjects. And if yoga helps them, wonderful, even if it's just one of the techniques. So it's not like not ignoring what's going on and, and being more right. proactive in addressing it. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so that's really, really um, comforting to hear. I'm going to ask you one more to share one more technique with us that you would recommend that we can practice. So let's say that we have the breathing technique you shared. Is there any other technique that would be beneficial as well for people mm -hmm. to start getting used to doing? to have the benefits of yoga in their daily life? Well, I'd say a big piece would be maybe at night, uh, maybe just get a little bit of lavender oil. You could even pick that up at the grocery store now, put a little bit on your wrists. Before you go to sleep, just take a few inhales and exhales, close your eyes, really just begin to calm the mind, body, spirit before you go to sleep because we do take a lot into our subconscious. We take a lot into our dreams, our stress from the day. So if you could begin to decompress and really just begin to work on calming techniques mm -hmm. at night, that would be very impactful for your next morning. So you're not waking up with the continuous stressors. Oh, that is beautiful. Now, how does that work for kids? And I know you have two <laughs> little ones. How does that work for them? <laughs> Well, we're working with our babies. And again, it's it's always a practice. It's not like they try it one time and it's <laughs> everything's a practice, Emily. <laughs> Can you do you put the lavender on their wrist? Does that help them to fall asleep? Yes, we even have um these like teddy bears, and you could buy them online where they have lavender in them and you heat them up in the microwave <laughs> and then it's warm and they can smell it. <laughs> They're adorable. Good. I might want one of those for myself. Oh, yes. <laughs> this presents and <laughs> yeah, that is a great tip. I think what you've shared is very, very powerful. And I really love the calming technique before going to bed, as opposed to just plopping down and just trying to fall asleep. You literally have this easing into that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, how, and what do you do in the morning, if I might add, as we wrap up? just to kind of go full circle, what does your morning routine look like from a yoga perspective? Well, our mornings are typically a little busy because we do have our daughter's three to half and our baby just turned one. Mm -hmm. But I'd say the biggest thing, Emily, is just looking at them, looking at our family and just taking gratitude every day. That would be my biggest, biggest take back for each morning start the day they go to bed calm and start the day grateful well i consider that the best advice you can all get and get yourself to the beach every time you can get yourself to the beach <laughs> and if you're not near a beach that's okay you can sit wherever you are and still breathe the the breathing technique that brianna shared brianna thank you for this marvelous presentation of the benefits of yoga in the workplace and beyond and how to really shape our perspective and our approach. So it's really fantastic um, to do this. And I know that people watching, if you have any questions, any comments, put them, drop them in the in the chat. Um, you can find Brianna at CrossFit Fort Pierce in Fort Pierce, Florida. If you want to take a class with her and you want to learn more about her company, Rematronics, they can visit your website, right? Rematronics.com. Um, run by her wonderful family and, and, and her dad and her mom, who's a wonderful artist, Miss Linda, yes, who also does great, great artworks. This is a beautiful family, so I'm so pleased to have Brianna uh, share. And then, of course, you all know that we're doing our Supercharged Monthly Mindset Retreat on the fourth Thursday of the month. So if you want an opportunity to step away, step back from your business, reflect and refresh yourself, I invite people to the Supercharge Retreats and definitely subscribe to YouTube so you don't miss the Supercharge Sunday and um, or join the Facebook group Supercharge with Emily. So there's so many ways to connect and be a part of this and follow on Instagram at Emily the Entrepreneur, where I'm going to share more tips and insights 
for our entrepreneurs in what we're doing. So again, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time on Supercharged Sunday. And until then, stay supercharged. Okay. Thank you, Emily. Thanks, Brianna.